The way that this uh, kind of looks in the uh, early stages of this is that you will have analyzed an assignment, you got curious about a topic, maybe you asked a question about that topic and did a test run to kind of figure it out whether or not the, the language and the terms you're using are working. And if it didn't work, then you kind of go through that, that process again. And if not, then you went ahead and you, you refined your question. And then that inquiry question that you ended up with had a few characteristics, hopefully. And if it doesn't, then there's something where it can just be a work in progress. There's, uh, there's no need to have a perfect inquiry question. Uh, really, you keep working on it up until the point where you have that uh, thesis statement uh, for your, your paper when you have your final draft. But a strong inquiry question to kind of move you through that research and writing process that we're engaged in right now is going to have a few things, including it's going to be multidimensional and complex. So a really easy way to measure that is could you answer your question with a yes or no answer? And if so, then that means that it's probably not multidimensional and complex enough. So you're going to want to have a couple different elements you're taking a look at. At the same time, when you do that, it helps make it narrow in focus as well. Typically, that's what's going to happen. Sometimes it can become a little bit too narrow in focus, but generally speaking, uh, most folks need to actually narrow their topics a little bit more. Uh, a good way to think about this, a uh, question that you can ask yourself to see if you're narrow enough in focus, is to ask yourself, could you write an entire book in response to the question that you're going to be researching? Or could you engage in a lifetime of research in relation to it? Now, if the answer to those are yes, then you might want to ask yourself if there's some ways that you could narrow it a little bit more. Uh, sometimes you're going to still write on some broader topics, and you definitely want to check in with what the assignment is asking of you. But um, having that narrow focus is actually going to be more helpful because the, one of the main things that it does is it helps you have that specific language, which is one of the other characteristics of a strong inquiry question. It's going to have some language where you are going to be able to put that into some of the academic research databases and be able to find some sources that come back in relation to that. So it's going to be um, much narrow in terms of where you want to go. So let's take a look at an example of how this might work. So if I had an inquiry question that could still be refined, I might have a question where it said, what are some of the impacts of refineries on birds at Cherry Point? So if you don't know, Cherry Point is a refinery that's here in Whatcom County in the, uh, by the Bellingham campus. And I need to kind of get this a little bit more refined because uh, if I asked myself, could I do a lifetime of research on this? You know, the answer is possibly yes. I mean, uh, probably fairly easily. Uh, it would take a while. I mean, there's lots of different kinds of birds. Um, and it turns out there's even more than one cherry point as well. And so I might need to get a lot more focused on that. So to develop a refined inquiry question, I can start to ask myself about which concepts in my question could be more specific. There is more than one cherry point, as a simple Google search tells me, and there are lots of birds that could be researched. Which birds are we talking about? All birds, specific birds. I might ask myself what I mean by impacts. What are the impacts from a refinery I might research? I might also ask myself why my question matters. Why am I looking into this question other than because I have an assignment to complete? You might not have an answer to this or other questions at this point, and that is okay. However, if you have an idea of what you might want to make or uh, research, you should consider adding that to your inquiry question. It doesn't mean that the research will end up backing up the point that you're uh, trying to research at this point. So you should be willing to change it, but it does help you give a direction for your research. Wherever specifics can be added, that will help when I start looking for sources that speak to this topic. So with the revised inquiry question, I have refined it to ask, in what ways does the BP refinery at Cherry Point in Whatcom County impact great blue heron feeding and nesting habitat in the last 10 years, and what can be done to mitigate the negative impacts? So now I have a specific species of bird, a specific geographic location, a specific type of habitat, a time range I'm looking at, and I'm asking what can be done about the negative impacts. These specific variables or dimensions of the question are going to help me keep focused on my research and writing in my paper, and that will be, uh, and it will help make it substantial enough. Chances are, once I get into the research, I will need to change this question further, but at least now I can start moving into asking sub-questions about my inquiry question, which will help me locate sources that will effectively speak to my inquiry question, in addition to starting to build out the sections of my paper. 
taking a look at some of the things that we just talked about now, uh, take a moment to take a look at your inquiry question and kind of think about how you might make it narrower, more focused, or more multidimensional. If you're feeling stuck on this, then this is a great time to go ahead and chat with one of our staff. You can chat with us online. And they'd be happy to think about some of the different variables that you might look at in making your uh, inquiry question uh, a little bit more focused and uh, a little bit more researchable.